Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim. G4 Claims. Gentlemen, welcome back to the Selic the Funder podcast. We are finally back. I mean, we did promise somewhat regular shows through the summer and the last episode we sat down to do we said, oh, that's us back. Mm-hmm. We weren't back, but we're back now and, and genuinely this time um, we are for, for, for the rest of the season because this weekend, this season is back. So we're on episode 66 of the podcast and it begs the question, has there been any 66s in the history of Celtic? Any shut numbers? Can I remember any? No, nope. nah, not a clue. Well, you'd be right in saying none because there is none at all. Not one player has picked up the number 66 for Celtic. But the next episode, we'll have a few to pick from. Yep. So that's good. Um, yeah, it is Wednesday night as we record this podcast. So disclaimer as it's released on the Friday. We don't know if anything's changed. We don't know if we have any breaking news in regards to the beginning of our season, any transfers, any signings. So hopefully it's not as outdated um, as the show is released. But... I'm joined by two beautiful guests this afternoon. Um, start with a birthday boy, hmm. you know, how happy but we should be sing. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> have you enjoyed your birthday? I mean, I've been at work all day and then here to record. Oh, you don't sound too fucking delighted. Yeah, here to, to record you? this and TSF, so. <laughs> That's uh, the, the perfect way to spend your 22nd birthday. Uh, it seems like the only way. Would you prefer this or a lockdown birthday? Ah, I'll go with us. Ah, I'll that's nice. This. You picked the right answer, thank God. I don't pay them a wage, so I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if I see the, the, the lockdown option. And Ryan, this is the first time I know. you've been here in ages. It's like it's like I'm like off the band list now or something. I'm, <laughs> I'm allowed back. You're um, back after a it's been an enjoyable summer, would you say? I think the last I time I definitely ripped the pressure out this summer. The last um, time I seen you was uh, Kieran Subcro. Yeah, yeah. That was an eventful night. Have you recovered since? I think do you know I don't think I've ever recovered. You see, that summer and I'm just like I'm just going with it. I'm in the same state every day. But you must be glad to be back to talk about Celtic. It's Absolutely been absolutely delighted. It's been a while. It's been plenty a while. to talk about as well since the last time I was on here. Well, that's it. You know, it is the season preview show. So of course, this is the second time I've done one of these in last year's preview show. I remember it was a big one. Um, I remember we were here for quite a while. Today we're on a bit of a tighter schedule because we are recording TSF back to back with this. Dev will be taking Ryan's seat. Um, very shortly, so make sure to check that out later on. But we've got so much to cover in regards to Celtic that I don't even know where to begin. But I guess the, the perfect place to start is recapping on what has been an eventful summer for Celtic. We've went out, we've uh, played our pre-season, our pre-season's finished, we've done the majority of our transfer business, and we know that there's meant to be more to come. Um, and ultimately, we're now walking into a game on Sunday which kickstarts our 22-23 campaign, which includes Champions League football as well. So, Ryan... How has the summer been for Celtic? Are you happy with the place that we sit in right now, heading into a campaign where we look to retain the league title? Yeah, I mean, if you look this time last season, or this time last year, rather, was an absolute nightmare. Trying to get people to even to, to just fit in positions. We had so many positions that needed filled all across the park due to the rebuild that we were doing. But this summer, it just feels as if we're just improving on what we've got. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to this thing that we're just... We've, we've stayed still. Mm-hmm. We've brought in players permanently, like Jota and Carter Vickers, no matter what you say, that is improving your team. Yep. Because they weren't guaranteed to be here at the start of next season or this season coming. <laughs> the fact that we've got them in the team means that we've improved. Plus, we've got Burnaby, who looks to be really exciting. He's getting better every game. You get Benjamin Seacrest, who's a better number two than we've had in years, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of our other signings who we've signed. Aaron Moy. Aaron Mo- Jens. Jens. Jens, who had a really good debut at the weekend, I thought. Moy, who will slot into the team as, as time goes on. And I don't think we're done yet, so I think we're in a really, really good place at the moment. And it's the first time I can feel is really improving on the team rather than rather than just getting getting players for positions just for the sake of it. Yeah. Kieran, the last time we done a podcast, it was me, you and Callum, and it was 
a couple of days before Jota officially signed for the club. We had Cameron Vickers come in permanently. We knew Bernabe was here. It was a real exciting time, and we've built on that since. So since that last podcast, what's your feelings towards the overall window and the overall summer that we've had? Because there is this notion that I've seen from some fans on Twitter of clubs that will remain unnamed that we have stood still. But, I mean, as a Celtic fan, we knew what we wanted at the end of last season, and we've got that. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, they'll try and turn their nose up at Carl Vickers and Jota and try and make it as if it's a waste of money in that, but they they too were pivotal in last season and us win, winning that title. So, I mean, everybody was buzzing to have them signed up. I had to spend a bit of money, but to buy quality players, you need to spend a decent bit of money nowadays. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the other signs we've brought in, even since our last podcast, we've strengthened at centre-half. Obviously, we've brought in Adam Moy, who's probably a few weeks after being the levels we need him to be at. Yep. But I think he'll gradually build that up in training and getting minutes here and there. But no, I'm pretty, I'm very happy with the business we've done this summer. I think Mace, uh, I can't imagine too many Celtic fans are dismayed. I feel like the only thing that people kind of want is today is bringing a holding midfielder. And I feel that's something that might get addressed yep. before the window. We heard, we heard Dan say last week on Sky Sports that there will be more signings, there will be more outgoings. Today we had another outgoing with Sassi Origidi. He's He has left just before we started recording. He's a to stand alone. And that's one thing this summer, um, Kieran, as well, that we've, we've cut a lot of dead wood. And I think we've done smart on both ends of it. You know, we've now got a squad, we've kept the reliable ones around, we're making room for people who probably need chances elsewhere. He's really, such, from the position we were in last year, it's crazy to think the difference because last year we were heading into a game against Hearts in the opening game of the season where we still had the likes of, you know, Ismaila Soro in the starting eleven, And now a year on, we've sussed out who needs to be here and who shouldn't be here. So on both ends of the window, I think it's been quite successful. I mean, it's night and day for that game going into Hearts last season. I feel, I'm trying to remember how it felt going into that game. I remember how it felt coming out of that game because it was awful. But, I mean... <sighs> It's one of the ones where you're you're really happy where you're at, and soon you can actually take a step back and realise like the state we were in last year. People can say we stood still all you want this season, but look, as as I said, it's night and day compared to last summer. And, and that's the thing; these players that were brought in, they're going to improve. They're at the age what twenty three and twenty four respectively. They are still going to improve as players. It's not as if we brought them in and they're just going to be exactly what they were last season. I think Carter Vickers and Jota have both got. So, so many more gears to go up in the team, which is really, really exciting. Interestingly enough, right, and we'll come on to previewing the Aberdeen game and looking at our potential. Bloody roasting in here, anyway. I know, it's an actual sauna. It is a sauna in here. I wish, wish there was air going up here, by the way. Um, I, anyway. Uh, by the way, massive shout out to Chief Four Claims who have got us along in the studio once again. We'll be back for the remainder of the season um, here week in, week out. So as always, make sure to check them out if you need any assistance in that department. But one thing that's interesting enough is the starting 11 difference from what will be this weekend to what was the opening game of last weekend. I've got it up on screen. I'll run through it very quickly. But Celtic starting 11 against Hearts on the 31st of July last year was Scott Bain, Anthony Ralston, Neil Beaton, Carol Starfield, Greg Taylor... Ismaila Soro, Cal McGregor, Oyela Bada, David Turnbull, James Forrest, odds on Edward. How different it has gone in. But that's the thing, you think about the opening kind of six rounds of last season. We struggled. We lost three of the opening mm-hmm. six rounds. We never had a clue what our best 11 was. We never had a clue who was coming in on deadline day. We had no idea what to expect, let alone go on and win a league title. This year, we've got an opening six rounds where you've got your settled team, Ryan. The, the, the difference heading into this season it makes you even more confident of challenging for a league title over the course of a 38 rounds. Yeah, because I thought we'd done so, so well to win the league last season after how bad the start was. You're thinking, surely God, we can't do that again. We've got a settled team, get players coming out in the sort of their second, third year. I, I look at players like Turnbull, who have still got gears to go up. Mm-hmm. Um, Matt O'Reilly, who's in his first proper season at Celtic. Hatate as well. Who's Everybody had signed that January window, really. It's incredible. They've only been there six months and they've got a full pre-season as well, which is absolutely ideal. Yeah. They'll, it, it's such a cliche to say they'll be like new signings, but they will because yeah. they've I think that's one of the key. He's going to be scary. For pre season, I was going to come on to that as my next topic, talk about pre season thus far, but you can see the difference in the legs 
with this full pre-season uh, behind players. Tarsi and Maida, especially. Yeah, it's yeah. evident it's how big this is. And, you know, as you said, it is cliche, but they are like new signings. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that these people who might come out and hit out with a standing still part, I don't realise how much business we'd done in January that was effectively business for this window at the same time. Mm-hmm. Building towards it. Yeah, exactly. It's proactive rather than reactive. Yeah. Because we knew that Beton and Rogic, uh, obviously they must have been making waves in January or even before uh, then. The 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 it's probably like discussions had that are right, heads up I might that, go uh, here uh, and that's good on them for saying that for giving the club an, an opportunity mm-hmm. to go in and replace him yes maybe one's been replaced better than the other in terms mm-hmm. of Rogic for O'Reilly because obviously Adaguchi I, I don't know if you see it he's, he's been injured in yeah, that's right. again, yeah. um, which is not ideal especially when he's been stop start his whole career at Celtic's been stop start but the fact that we got those two players in kind of softened the blow of Rogic and Beaton leaving and the fact that they're in, that means they're already integrated and they're ready to go, basically. Or one of them's ready to go and the other one will be when he's fit. Christ, I, I know this is very off topic, but i just seen the final score of Bodo Glint and Linfield. 8-0. Yeah. So they've become a Jeez decent so. team in a week again. 8-0, mm-hmm. no, geez. So. Um, just mad that I've seen that pass start there. Um, yeah, it, you know, people have already started. The social media is a wonderful place, but it's... It's that point in the season now where you get it on both sides, obviously, that people are getting carried away. I've already seen a couple of tweets saying Celtic have no chance, and I think I'm forgetting this is a side that won a double last year. This is the big question. I don't know where it's, if we should go through pre-season first, but this season, Kieran, expectations domestically. Um, is it simply going out and, and retaining the title again? Is there a treble that we should aim for? It's going to be a very difficult season. I think aiming for a treble is... I'm not saying it's in the land of impossibility, but it's something that, I mean, 10 years ago, you've only gone into a season when it was neck and neck saying, oh, we need to win the treble. I think winning the league, like, obviously you want to win the cups, but at the end of the day, winning the league is the bread and butter. So, and I think we're back to it being proper close now, like fine margins. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if you'll get too many people out there saying that anything less than a treble mm-hmm. would be classed as a failure. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Obviously, you can want a treble, but we didn't win a treble last year. I, I suppose it wasn't. A, nobody overreacted in that sense. The thing is, obviously, the last few years we came so accustomed to winning mm-hmm. trebles that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can set back to the reality of that isn't the norm. Mm-hmm. And that's me not being under ambitious. I obviously want us to win trebles, but I, I would never place that as the expectation no. on Celtic this season. Yeah, that being the minimums. Uh, quite unhealthy because uh, uh, no. that's everything and, and, and I think that's the danger of the danger of expecting that all the time is probably something that would falter on European and we'll come on to talking about Europe but that's something that kind of falters the European form I think as well by putting such a stress on the domestic football you forget about the importance of, of performing in Europe I'd, happy, I'd be quite happy to sacrifice a, a domestic trophy in order for us to win a couple of knockout ties because yeah. I would see that as more of a progression than winning domestic trophies because we've done that yeah I and want to see the next step well that was my, that was one of the questions I was leaving I had wrote down for later on in this discussion but we may as well talk what what comes next for Celtic because we, we basically Ange wasn't supposed to win the league last year that was never yeah. in the script the script was it was a rebuild season and we need to get back to being close to Rangers we end up winning a double and that included a league title. So the next step in the Ange Postecoglou progression, Ryan, is it to be better in Europe? Wait, where, 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 where do we go now? To win a knockout tie would be great, first of all, but in order to win a knockout tie, we'd have to finish third, at least yeah. third mm-hmm. in a group. I mean, it's a bit pie in the sky stuff to win a knockout tie in the Champions <laughs> I mean, that'd be incredible. That, that would also mean that we've done well in the group but yeah. I would take I'd, I'd bite your hand off for third place just now in the group and then go on a wee run I mean, th- third place obviously needs to be the aim I mm-hmm. think in the Champions League it depends on your draw obviously but I think we're beyond the days now in the Champions League having a favourable draw for a, t- a team like us to be mm-hmm. honest because well, it's been five seasons now since Celtic have took part in the Champions League Thunder even, even back then everybody was talking about how much it was changing if we thought it was changing then it's it's fully changed now multiplied like, by ten you could say mm-hmm. that the landscape is just com- it's bonkersly different right. it's not long until this new format kicks in as well so we should really try to take advantage of this format while it lasts because I think it will get more difficult for Celtic mm-hmm. to do I, well I in Europe in the next few years so I think are they not doing it so it's like teams get in based off of like the Swiss format is it is that I, what it's called I don't know I thought it was like the mad format and it was like clubs would like get in purely because of who they are nah, right. right. 
I mean, Celtic are Celtic. Mm-hmm. We Celtic should... have actually won the competition. I know, so I, we not get an invite every year? A like, very, like the Masters or something? Uh, it's like a very small amount of clubs in, in, in terms of the, how many clubs there is in Europe. There's only a small amount that have actually won this competition. Yeah. Celtic are one of them. We, mm-hmm. we should be probably on that invite list, but I don't think... That would think... probably then create a monopoly because you'd see teams like Stour Bucharest getting 40 million every year uh, and I, then it would be mm-hmm. topsy-turvy again. I'd love like, that though. I'd love that kind of switch in the fin- football Hamburg, landscape. Hamburg in the second division being uh, in the Champions no, League. No, Every not in Forest. <laughs> well, to be fair, they're, they're building a good team. But that's uh, for another not, day. I'm trying to think of all the obscure clubs that could be in there, like Bucharest, Aston Villa, mm. Nottingham Forest, Hamburg, clubs like that. Just all well, the, at least Nottingham what, Forest are in the Premier League now. Well, Hamburg yeah. are still in the second division, so get up them. Yep. Um, so pre season has passed, and of course, there's so much this like there is so much discussion about this season we can have on a on a preview show, and we're going to talk about the Aberdeen game very shortly in depth because that's what we normally do on these podcasts we preview the games we review the games um, and that's why we're back but pre-season is done and dusted unbeaten in pre-season I'm glad it's finished far too much too long far it was, too, far too, it was long. too long and it was full of too much negativity people just read too much into pre-season and it's an actual so hit man like, why let a game against Legia Warsaw for a testimonial <laughs> determine whether or not we're good enough for this season coming see them out can't just absolute losing the plot of that second half, man. I'm mm. like, have a day off. I don't just, I take I can't a day off. Take a day off. But this is the thing, though. I can't do friendlies. I can't right. switch off. The fact that because it's Celtic playing, it still annoys me if we don't win the game. Mm. And my dad's sat next to me in games, and he's like, "Oh, it's only a friendly." So I'm like, "I know." But it's, that, it's just that winning mentality, I just can't get out of nah, my head. I feel, I feel, I've like, got I feel like I can switch off pretty easily for a friendly, right. to be honest, man. I feel like, yeah, I, I mean, I watched all of them in their entirety. Um, but it's like one of those ones it's like people read too much into it for a game that doesn't take your full attention you know and it's good mm. to point things out and it's good to be you don't need to sit there properly engaged and over analysing it it's they're friendly games they're genuine warm up matches yeah, they're there to get fitness and I mean it's, it's alright you can start to pick out players you think are looking decent well, obviously everybody's raving about Hitati he's looking sharp in that so you, you get to sort of preview what it's going to be like for the season but I think people reading too much into like a second string team with like eight changes at half time, no seeing out the win against Legia Warsaw and that. So I think people just need to calm it down a wee bit with stuff like that. Yeah. So overall though, as I said, undefeated. Um Norwich at the weekend was a pretty standard job from Celtic, what you expect at Celtic Park. I think that the point for the people who brought up all the negatives, Ryan, I think the positives far outweighed the negatives. There are so many things from these those preseason friendlies that were really promising in, in terms of how our season's going to start this Sunday. Mm-hmm. It's bit, Norwich were playing a team I, I, I recognised a lot of the players, so therefore it was, a, it was an all right team. I thought Cantwell's a good player. He stands out apart from totally totally missing the ball in the second <laughs> half in the box, which was hilarious. Um, but it was a lot of the same players that they were playing in the Premier League. I know they were one of the worst Premier League teams right. in recent memory. But they still got Rashika, they've still got Cantwell, etc., Pookie, etc., etc. Um, but there was a lot of positives. Um, I thought it was a more complete performance than the one against Blackburn this, the week before. We did, we did have a couple of wee drops during the game, but we managed to up it in certain points. Mm-hmm. Whereas and against Blackburn, we dropped, and then that was it for the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, I thought it was more consistent. And that's good because the season starts on Sunday. We need to be in that frame of mind. Is it just me? Or do, do any, like in recent years, does anybody... And this is the thing, it's, so, it's totally different this pre-season because this is a question I'll ask, and I've brought this up a couple of times, Kieran. Do you think that the fact that we've not had European qualifiers is something else that's made people a lot more negative? Because we have had games where you can make 11 changes, whereas it's not a competitive game where you need to go out and try your absolute hardest and you're focusing on getting a result to take you to the next round. Do you think it's kind of... It's definitely not fault of this because we're better off without them. We don't want those games 40 million in the bank but do you think in terms of like a, a perception point of view not having those games has maybe changed the outlook and how these friendly games I, go I think, I think this is maybe filling the void for people who like Aye. to try and f- find a reason to get up for something in the sort of pre-season because I mean usually at this point we're sitting getting raging about near beat on being at centre <laughs> half and that for other qualifiers it just seems like a staple but nah, I don't know maybe people are just filling the, the void they've been missing for months maybe that's it I don't Aye. think people are used to it at all we but, should yeah. have something to fixate ourselves on. And that's it's weird. It, it is. It's, it's properly weird because I don't remember. This is this is the point I was originally going to make. I don't remember having a pre-season in terms of friendlies over the past five to ten years where folk have got so negative over friendly games. And maybe it's because nobody's cared about them because we've had the qualifiers instead. Maybe that's the reason. Mm. Um, but I just feel like this year the friendlies were so overanalyzed in comparison to prior. 
I think I probably because it was not Neil Stanhoys to be fair. Uh, so. I think as well because the standards have been upped because it's an inch side. The fact when people don't see it going at a hundred percent, people automatically think, "Oh, that's a dip." Oh, we did stop. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, we're not listening. <laughs> aye. Um, but I, it's, there's nothing really read about. I mean, I'll take all the positives from all the games. I mean, we'll iron them out. If you're going to make mistakes, you better make them in pre-season than on Sunday. Yeah. So. Like, people were going on about how Carter Vickers didn't look as sharp. I'd rather he wasn't as sharp in their games than the games coming True. up. Same for Juranovic yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I know they'll up it on Sunday. That's right. just the players that they are. Mm-hmm. So, standouts and flop Not flops, but who do, standouts and left to be desired, you could say. What are we thinking? Who Who is the ones? Rio Hitati was the first uh, name you mentioned, Kieran. That's what I was going to say, to be fair, because, I mean, he's just looked a lot sharper on the ball. He just, he's got a lot more energy. I've, I've even seen some new get highlights package for his game against Norwich. Uh, I'm like, geez, oh, oh, overanalyzed for you. <laughs> but, I've not seen that yet. No. I, I seen, seen, seen it on Twitter yesterday, but he just he looks a lot more comfortable. As you said, he's got the legs now, so I think he'll be, I think he will be massive for us if he can stay injury free. You've been mailing me about him constantly, right? <sighs> what a player! Um, he's the sort of player that you get excited to watch at Celtic Park. He's the sort of guy that you pay the admission fee for. He just controls the midfield. I, I know McGregor does a lot of the running, but all of the creative stuff comes from him when he's playing. He, he makes passes that other players don't see he's got the vision I think he's a very very special player and the, the sky's the limit for him both at here and potentially down the line somewhere else unfortunately I, I thought the whole midfield three just looked great together through pre-season the main three McGregor mm-hmm. Hitati O'Reilly I thought that I think that's going to be very dangerous this season well being it's also good the fact that we can swap out O'Reilly and Turnbull mm. the two of them I think will get a lot of game time uh, between the two of them T- Turnbull took his goal really well and he did, he did die. die the bull, it was, it, very, <laughs> the bull. <laughs> it was a very Turnbull-esque goal that's the sort of goal that he scores about five yeah. or six a season yeah. sort of feigning and then shooting I just love it yeah I am um, I think other players have stood out to be over. It was good to see Jacques Marcus back at the weekend after missing a couple of games, and I thought he looked really good mm-hmm. as well. I thought he looked sharp. Um, Jota was taking the absolute mickey out of every player yeah. he played against during pre season. Um, Welsh has been quite good in pre season yeah, as well. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, the Welsh is just I feel like I'm always just going to be harsh on Welsh like I don't remember watching them and going oh that was great, great. I'm just like Aye, I thought he was alright not going to fucking be there anyway I don't think he's really put a foot wrong in pre-season um, he's not made any glaring errors that I can remember um, he's, he's played alright next to Carter Vickers but I will say that once Jens came on I think Jens and Carter Vickers that looks like a partnership Jens yeah, looked good straight away that mm-hmm. block straight like off the back he, he looked kind of pacey mm-hmm. he looked like Julian with legs I thought mm-hmm. That's how I'd say it. Aye, he looked like he would eat Julian up for breakfast. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think Julian's a bit soft at times. This guy looks like he, he chews on bricks. No. He's just a lovely, he's, he's a lovely guy. Aye. Very nice guy. He, was, he, he we, can pass as well. We'd done the fan media presser with him last week and after he finished, he came around and shook all of our hands. And, Didn't even know that. Uh, oh. He came around and shook all of our hands. He spoke to all of us, you know, wished us luck. We wished him luck. It was, it was genuinely, what the, the conversation with him is the best one we've had at a fan presser yet. Like, he was genuinely very discussive, you know. Um, but uh, let's turn our attention to the, the left to be desired column. I think there's a couple of players in pre-season who have left question marks in the minds of Celtic fans. One of them's already gone. What, Uri Gide? Uri Gide. Uri Gide, yeah. I can't, I can't even watch him. I'll be listening to this he's podcast. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's just, I'm, I'm glad that option to buy is there. Is that there, aye? Aye, it's got an option to buy. I think it's like one and a half million. I'm like, please just end, please. Maybe they'll see a Hendry quality in him. I'm going to mm. start off with a name and say James Forrest. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I feel like everybody's sort of... There's a lot to be left. A lot to be desired, man, because... I mean, one of the main things about Forrest in the past was his pace, and it just looks like he's not got the legs at all anymore. Aye. I don't know. You have, you, you've got some people that will back him to the, to the very end, <laughs> the bitter Aye. end. Aye. I mean, I'm not going to start a pile on the guy. He's been a very good servant <laughs> for Celtic, but, yeah, but yeah. I don't know. I just do you, do you, I don't think he should be. Do you think Forrest ever sits and thinks about his, his, his um, image in the Celtic support? Do you think well, I mean, he ever uh, thinks of all the social media? Well, I mean, thinks about the fact he's, he's never had a testimonial. I think he's very aware why he wouldn't have a testimonial uh, because he knows he's what. In, in my lifetime, anyway, I've not really seen that many players that have played that many games for Celtic and been such split opinion uh, on him. Like, I wonder how he feels. Maybe he needs a hug. Maybe he just needs a hug. Um, the most, is the most inconsistent place on the pitch to play. That's the problem for him. So 
and his numbers are really good. Like the amount of goals and assists he has got for Celtic are good, but at the same time, he's had so many appearances for Celtic. You'd expect that. I think he's had a few seasons where he's been unreal. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely unreal. Brendan Rodgers saved his career, saved his Celtic career because yeah. he was, like, was going to head out the door after Dyla left. Yeah, um, it was him and Brown that get the two. The two biggest sort of comebacks under Brendan Rodgers and from where he was to where he is now, I know he's had the two years obviously in and out of the team, that's due to injury mostly, but the fact that he's still in and around is probably an achievement in itself considering where he was in 2015, 2016. Mm-hmm. The fact he got a three year contract in itself. I think that's just so he finishes his career here. Aye, aye. I just can't imagine him going anywhere else. No, I couldn't imagine him whipping on like that, but he's fair isn't he, maybe he'll go back to here. He's been doing that way. Play for his hometown, something like that. I can imagine that. Like you were, like you were saying, his pace. It's if, if, if the pace is gone, then his game has got to change in order to reflect. He's not. That. A, he's not he's a still trying to do the same things that he was doing as a 22, 23 year old. But he can't do that anymore. He's Aye. not got the sheer pace to run past somebody. And I also think he's got a wee bit of hesitancy in his game now as well. Oh, he, mate, I, I've kept banging on about it and he watch alongs everything that he'd done. He was so hesitant to do. He would hold the ball, he would like faint it with his foot about six times, then he'd lose it. I'm like, make up your mind, you're passing, you're running, you're doing it. You've got, he, he looked so scared to, t- to take a man on, mm-hmm. he looked scared to pass the ball. I think that maybe in his head he's overthinking his game because he knows the position he's in. Yeah. Also, because I think if a badder get any of those chances, he would have scored them. And I think that's the difference now. I think Abad is just a better finisher as well. Um, big things to come for him this season as well. Any other lacklustre pre-seasons from anybody off the top of your head? James McCarthy. Ah, well, it's just I, th- James, I feel like it? there was nothing to... Maybe they, I think the bar was that low <laughs> already. <laughs> there was rumours that he was the one that crocked uh, Idiguchi. Aye. Aye. That's got to be made up. That kind of video. I mean, I don't know. I feel like people are sort of a bit... Meh, we had a good as well. Jordan, I've seen, I've seen some people pretty happy with it, but at other times I'm like, I don't know. I mean, he says, he's all right. I feel like he's not caught a break here at yeah, all. Yeah. I mean, I feel like everybody was hoping that he would have kicked on in pre season and would have mm-hmm. been a good option for us, but the fact we've brought in Adam Moy, yeah. and probably going to bring in another midfielder, I don't know. Is it just a case of him not with everybody, but either positive or negative, we'll judge it when the foot, the real football mm. starts. Nah. I think As it's I just... said, you kind of read too much, isn't you? Yeah, this? yeah. No. I, I guess. And here we are, what, 20 minutes 20 in? 20 minutes in. Reading, in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I know. That's five minutes because of pre-season. Yeah, listen, it's got to be done. It's got, to be, that. that's it's that. got to be done. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much how the, 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 the summer has went. I don't know if there's anything else from the summer that you boys want to bring up before we kind of move on to the next sort of stages of the show. I just can't even believe that Jota is our player. Like I can believe Carter Aye. Vickers because it's a good move for him, but Jot is a flair player, and just Aye, seeing him, the fact, the fact that he's a permanent Celtic player, I still get the buzz off that big time. Aye. Watching him against Blackburn, especially, you're like, this, this guy's just incredible. Can't wait to see him throughout the season without worrying about where he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Like Aye. at the end of the season, the fact that he's here, the fact that he's ours, he's here and he's perfect, <laughs> and I love him. Well. Um, that's the summer sort of wrapped up one more thing from the summer that we should maybe quickly touch on is your thoughts on the kits are we happy with the new kits I've decided to represent the home shop today um, which has grew on me massively I, 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 love, it. It. I, I love it it's, the first leak it looked awful I mean you mm. need to shave your top chest hairs to wear it like, I learned that the hard way Kieran was obviously you were there yeah, you, you can't let the day ones out you need to get rid of them um <laughs> And uh, the away kit is just it's beautifully yeah. stunning. Beautifully stunning. I'll be getting that for going on holiday. Are you willing to retract your statement on Adidas? You were giving them some amount of stick. Well, I wouldn't say I was giving them stick. I was just being honest and saying. I like people are too harsh on Adidas. They expect the world from Adidas, so when they ah, see something so they don't like. They're the biggest kit manufacturers in the world. I think they are bigger than Adidas. Listen, no, no, <laughs> not having that slander on I've, I've looked at the two, I've looked at their gross. Shut up, right? Nike who's, are bigger. But I, I do prefer who's, got, who's got the Who's got a bigger clubs? Who's got the bigger. Nike may be a bigger company, but in terms of football kits, who's got the bigger clubs? Right, alright, fine. Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Manchester like United, a, a Arsenal, a Celtic. We've got Adidas, <laughs> Juventus. All the all the biggest teams in the world are with Adidas, right? Okay, so you just calm it. Barcelona, they won't even fucking exist in two years, right? <laughs> a right mess. Um, right, okay. Before we get on to talking about 
Sunday's game and previewing that because I think that's the next big thing. It's time for our first game of the season in terms of the, the mid-podcast games or end-of-podcast games. We will have a quiz today, so we don't want to spend too long talking about many things because we've got a lot of questions to fire through on the return episode. A lot of birthday wishes for Kieran Ald as well. Thank you. Take it your phone's been blown up all day with a... When you said blown up. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, um, I just thought I'd be nice to you. Uh, so we're going to play Who's That Ticket? Courtesy of Kieran, of course, who sends these in for us all the time. I've still got a build-up of ones that I've, that I've not used. Now, today's Who's That Tick is going to take us a little bit back in time. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I knew Can that I was going to be... Can I set B, please? Have you seen them? Yeah, I've seen the first one. Because it's a long... Fucking... Long, I mean... Fucking no. looking. Looking. You, I can't believe you. You're a cheating bastard. I'm not cheating. It's just a, because my laptop's there and yours is there. So Can what I, one did you see? What clubs did it involve? Grasshopper. Right, okay, so right, I know who you right, that's fine. So Kieran, you're gonna have to take player one then. So that is that is simply how it has to Would go this week. Player one? Uh no, probably not. Oh. So player one and player two and at least I was honest. Thank you to Kieran as always. So Kieran, your player, uh, he played for Celtic. So this is how far back in time we're going here. He played for Celtic between the years of nineteen ninety four and nineteen ninety nine, making ninety nine appearances for the club. So, your player joined Celtic from Heart of Midlovian and he left Celtic to join Grasshopper Zurich. So there you go, there's your there's your first sort of clues. Also, there's a, the noise of the coffee machine has finally went off, so if that's been bugging you throughout the podcast, we do apologise. I didn't realise it was on. I thought it, it was, it was. I, I was wondering what it actually was, but yeah, it, 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 it was on. Bastards. Um, would you say 94 to 99? 94 to 99. It was a fullback. Do you not have a scooby? I don't know. Do you want to get a, a, a guess? No. No. You just get up. I'm just going to ruin it. No. No. All right. Well, Kieran's left you hanging on there. Um, yours was Tosh McKinley. I was naming a guest. Didn't even know you went to Grasshopper. There you go. So wait, do you know no do you know who player two is then? Yeah. Oh what a fucking mess that was. Wait, what? <laughs> he knows who player two he no, he was quite high up in the, in the Oh screen. he's fucked him. What a podcast. Give me the answer if you want. <laughs> player two. Player two was, just to clarify, he joined Celtic. I home. thought they would have been spaced out. Oh, I don't believe us. He's read the name for player two and thought it was player one. All right, numpty. I've got more. We can switch it up and start do that, again. Do that. Oh, right. So the player two would have been joining Celtic from NAC Breda and leaving for Nottingham Forest. And the correct answer would have been Pierre Van Hoydonk. But of course, we can't do that one now because McGinley does his nosy and looks. My, what if I had something up on here, very private? You shouldn't have had it up. <laughs> 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 Well, what happens if it just... No, the reason I was looking over is because usually you like, have an agenda or something to read, so just to keep me in check. And then you had the the squad against Hearts. Right, okay, we'll go on to players. We'll do it again. Welcome to Who's That Tick? Brought to you by Kieran. Like thank, you very, thank you very much, Kieran. So, player one, player two. Kieran, since you were screwed over the last time round, I'll let you choose if you would like player A or player B. Player one or player two? Player two. Player two, okay. Right, that means, Ryan, you're up first and no okay. peeking at the fucking screen. Right. Okay. The clue that Kieran gives us for this one, I forgot to read the clue for the last one actually, so maybe it's worked out for the better. The clue Kieran has given us, as highlighted above, um, the link with these two is that they were both on loan at Celtic in seasons where we only won a league title. Mm. No double, no treble, mm. only one trophy and that would be the league title. Um, and there is an additional clue if you are really, really struggling, but we'll start with you. Ryan McGinley. Your player joined Celtic from Trabzon Spa in Turkey mm -hmm. and left Celtic to join Re Creativo now Kieran what I will say to you is this one is relative to our summer and you'll know how when it comes to the answer so he joined from Trabs on Sport then came to Celtic on loan and left for a re well he never left Celtic technically but it went to Re Creativo so god this would have been a while is this a while ago he played for Celtic in the season 2011-12 or two, aye, 2011-12 See this is my ballpark this is when I start remembering about transfers but I can't oh, was think was it 12-13? I think it was 12-13 I think it was 12 he played in 2012 I think mm. it was 12-13 then I think about it 
Because we want to come eleven, twelve, didn't we? Don't know. I'll give you another clue. Mm-hmm. He made three appearances for Celtic. Three. I'm gonna. Three. Oh, what was then? Twenty twelve. Yes, twenty twelve. Mm. I'm gonna guess Rami Gershon. It's not a bad guess. Mm. But it's the wrong answer. Kieran, would you have had a guess in your head? Uh, no, because you said three appearances. I was like, nah. Because I, I originally, I don't know, I was guessing Miku. I mean. When I said relative to our summer, how does the name Pavel Brovek, oh, aye. or Brozek, sorry, tickle your fancy? <laughs> there you go. A uh, legend at the club of uh, Visla sure Krakow. I'm, I'm sure we got him on loan for Visla Krakow. Uh, well, there you go. Right, Kieran, which means your player, oh, this is a name, this. This is a name, this. He joined Celtic on loan from Manchester United. And when he left Celtic, he ended up at Reading Football Club. I'll give you the same clues I gave Ryan McGinley. He played for Celtic in the year of 2015-16, making three appearances for the club. Is it Tyler Blackett? It is Tyler Blackett. What a fucking name. I was buzzing when he signed because I was like, Man United, that's like, oh, he'll be a player. Ron. I was always remember, Ron. Do you remember he got taken off uh, when he came on as a sub? Then he got taken off. Oh, again. that's right. So it was a Europa League game. Yeah. I think it was, was it Mulder? Might have been. That was so. because, yeah, you know, he tore us apart that night. And that's when the fandom started. Uh, yeah, yeah, aye. I, I mean, his Wikipedia is very short. Joy, won to Celtic, made his debut playing at left back against Aberdeen. Uh, lost Celtic lost two one. Blackett dropped out of the side for a few matches. Returned on October fourth against Hamilton Aki's taking the place of the suspended F. E. Ambrose in a two one win, and that's what it said. So wow. there you go. Talking about two of his three appearances. So there you go. That's who's that tick done for this week, which means we can move on now to talking about this weekend's game as we get back to previewing and reviewing matches. It feels like a long time since yeah. we've been able to do this. It's the opening game of the season, uh, boys, and it, it means there's an unpredictability of what to expect because Aberdeen are going through a transition themselves and this is kind of a big season for, for them and, and Jim Goodwin to bounce back from the disappointment of what was a nightmarish year last year that started with Stephen Glass and ended with Jim Goodwin. So it's hard to, to see what we expect but in terms of what we expect from Celtic on Flag Day, Kieran, it's always a, an exciting opener because the flag goes up, there's entertainment on the park and there's always a good atmosphere. I mean, I, it's, always, it's always a good day at Celtic Park to be fair but I feel like that carries an expectation when it's flag day. I mean, obviously, if it's Celtic's first game of the season, there's always expectation. But it's, as you said, you're coming up against the unknown in this Aberdeen team. They've done all right in the, the League Cup. They're obviously through the, the round of 16. They've got a lot of new players through the door, but because I feel there's been a big transitional period, because you've got Jim Goodwin allowed to actually put his own stamp on the team now that he's yep. in for a summer transfer window. So, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of, as you said, unpredictability, but let's hope that it doesn't be too unpredictable when it comes to the game, because that's the last thing you need to start half the season. But I feel like Ange won't let the standards drop, especially not for the first game of the season. No, absolutely not, and that's the thing, Ryan, I think we go into this game in terms of what to expect from Celtic's performances, we know what ex- that's not as unpredictable. Mm-hmm. We 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 know it'll be good to see that back to the full intensity at the weekend. Hopefully, not not to sound big headed or that or anything, but it it matters about how we play rather than the opposition. If we play at the best of our ability against Aberdeen, I'm sure we'll come out on top. But I, I think it's a, it's a good game to come into as well. I think because it, it's a tough test and they're a bit of an unknown quantity, but. Celtic games against Aberdeen always seem to take care of themselves, especially at home. Um, I know we got beat off them a couple of years ago. I think that was the last day of the season. Yeah, we're, we're, we're laid down. <laughs> we're laid down so they uh, don't finish above Rangers. I remember Kenny McLean had a particularly good game that day. He was playing at the weekend as well. But it's always a big game. Flag day is always a big game. Celtic Aberdeen, it will take care of itself. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I think Aberdeen, not that they're going to surprise a lot of people because I do expect them to do better than last season, but I mm-hmm. think they'll be quite high up at the table come the end of the season just because even... just because Jim Goodwin's getting all these players in. I think I might have put them bottom half for man. I put, really? them, I put them fifth. I'd put them fourth. It's a long season, mm-hmm. man. I mean, they've lost Ramsey, eh? they've lost Ferguson, they're too big. They have, but they, they've, they've, they've bought loads of players in and around. So... It'll be interesting to see how they do. I feel like I can't can't really judge uh, the players, to be fair, until I've actually seen them Mm. in a few games, to be fair. It's not like I've been sitting watching a League Cup (laughs) game. Exactly, aye. And, I mean, they've got a boy in... Can't mind what his name is. He's for Notts County. 
the past few yeah, days. Their fans were gutted to lose him at Notts County. But, I mean, really he's coming up for non league, to be fair, but 16 goals and 36 appearances, I think it was, I checked. But mm. yeah, I think he'll be decent for them, but they've got a couple of players for some team in Hungary, something by the past. Niovski, was it Niovski? Well, nah, he, he scored at the weekend. Mm. I mean, they've, 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 had, they've had a decent Fed Cup group stage, or, sorry, Premier Sports Cup group stage. I keep forgetting it's changed. They have won all of their games, as mm. you'd expect them to do. Rafe didn't Rovers. concede a goal either, did No, they? I didn't concede one goal, so their results to run through very quickly. 2-0 against Peterhead, 2-0 against Dumbarton, 5-0 against Stirling Albion, and 3-0 against Rafe Rovers. Um, teams that you'd expect to beat anyway, oh. so it doesn't really change much. But they are on a confidence run here. They, they, you know, they've won, they're, they're playing well, they're defending well, obviously they're scoring goals so they are going to come to Celtic Park with something and, and the question is will they attack the game will they sit back I mean you don't really I mean, know what to expect you don't know what sort of game plan they're going to try mm-hmm. and implement to mm-hmm. be fair are they going to just try and like, snatch and grab a point or something or are they going to come in and try and gaze a game this is weird because it, it's the sort of two sides of Jim Goodwin here are hitting off each other because at, at St Martin he'd be expected to just sit behind but at Aberdeen Aberdeen are expected to win things mm-hmm. I know they've they've not won a lot of things in the past 20, 20 odd years but the, their fans have got expectations and they'll be wanting to do better than they done last season the, the thing the thing that's quite um, interesting is the fact that Liam Scales obviously can't play against us oh that's right played yeah. basically every game for oh yeah that's just, just remember that's just dawned on me the, the banner the, right. No more Celtic loans. And they figured this out in the last. Te- I think it was, no, I think it was at the weekend. Three players in the past five years, one of them being one of their better players when it was Ryan Christie. Ryan Christie, Adam Montgomery, and Liam Scales. Three players. Unless we're missing somebody, I know. Obvious. I, and I can't. Can you think of any? We were thinking about this at the weekend. We comp- uh, who Aber- the aye, in the last sort of five years, five, six, seven years, I can think of three players that have been on loan to Aberdeen from us. So that, and they're whipping out banners about it. Because what well, Adam Montgomery wasn't that great. Is that Aberdeen weren't that great, that's the thing. And he got injured as well. Aye, so. I know. So you know and, and then they're all ranting raving about skills. They don't have the first they, game. They don't, they're not saying uh, no more Norwich loan players because uh, James Madison was probably their best player the mm. past 10, 15 years, I would say. Yeah. Um or but maybe that's a bit unfair on like players like Lewis Ferguson and that, but he did make a massive Andy impact Considine. On Adam Rooney. There you go. Aye, Adam Rooney as well. Where is he now? He Bruni. was Salford, but he's... He's looking for a club, I think. Is he? Yeah, Sign him up. Celtic, Celtic, sign him up. You take, you take any Rooney at Celtic. Let's ah, well, listen, if, I, put the two together. if I get the opportunity to stick my arms out wide and shout Rooney, then I'll take it. Um, but I, you know, Aberdeen have been de- decent enough in, in the pre-season and we just need to wait and see what they bring us. And that's the thing, with these early stages of the Premiership this season, every game is going to be a sort of... Oh, but I don't know how they're going to set up against Celtic because there's so many changes around the league and I think it'll be topsy turvy from what it was last year it's interesting. the likes of Hibs and Aberdeen for example will they be back to back failures this season or will they be back up the top half so we don't really know how these games are going to be an approach mm-hmm. uh, and interestingly enough last season just to pull it up pull it up um, we played them three times and we won all three. We beat them 2-1 at Pataudry. We then beat them 2-1 at Celtic Park. We beat them 3-2 at Pataudry in February as well. So they did, for having a poor season, they ran us close in every game. Mm-hmm. And if you remember, I think it was that 3-2 game at Pataudry. That was a scare. Right, that was a mm-hmm. big scare that day. And especially when we were, you know, just after... That was just, what, a week after the Derby success? Yeah, because right, you had Ibrox erupting and uh, what's it called? Oh, for the, we should the, not be moved. For the brief moment and then we obviously scored well three through. So for as poor as Aberdeen can be, they are a team that will offer problems. I mean, they offered problems against Rangers as well, so it shows that their, their problems I mean, are against the That's because that's Scott are, Brown was there. But, I mean, yeah, to be fair, we only beat them at home because the ball had Cal McGregor's ass. I remember that goal. Aye, that's right. So, I mean, like, even though they were shite last season, like, they always seem to get themselves up for games against like, Celtic and Rangers, to be fair. But I feel like that mentality is still built into like, the team. Like Even if it's a new team, they try and drill into them. You need to you can't really like, lay down. Or, no lay down, but no gear 100% in these games. I think this game suits us, this matchup suits us. Big game, flag day. I mean, if we can, if we can come away with it the weekend with a convincing win, it'll be a good like, boost to the season. I know Aberdeen mm-hmm. weren't that great last year, but just looking back at previous seasons, you'd have looked at Aberdeen first game. Mm-hmm. You know the one you want to start off on, you'd have rather, I don't know, like St. Johnson. Or... Aye, aye. It's the first two games of the season, Aberdeen, then Ross County. Two teams that have recruited quite extensively this summer. It'll be interesting to see how they both do. Um, it'll be two good tests I think mm-hmm. yeah that will be a good test at least it's not Livy away true we can hope for a result though we broke that now though so it's, we don't need to worry <laughs> about that as much 
Yeah. How early on in the season do we want to be singing top of the league looking down on the Rangers? I don't want to hear that until next year. Mm. You don't want to hear it until next year? Oh, well, guy, okay, we talked about this in the car. We don't want it to come back and I beat us. I just feel like it's one of the ones that would definitely come back and beat you if you start singing it after two weeks. Like, definitely. I don't yeah. expect David Martindale to do anything. I mean, when did, when did we whip it the last time? It was a, I feel like that game against Aberdeen. But when we actually did go to Apple against Rangers at Celtic Park, we went for it straight away. But then you're in, you're in the running at the end of the season at that point. Aye. <laughs> the boys haven't even been kicked yet. Aye. I'm fully expecting people to sing it like, before the game's even kicked off, even though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. It's a good song. Technically, we will not be. Aye, technically, we'll be three points behind if Rangers win on Saturday. <laughs> so, um, aye, we can only wait and see what happens and we can. I'm excited. Right. Um, last thing to do in terms of this game is predict who we think the first 11 of the season will be mm-hmm. um, so I'm going to run through what I, I think could be the 11 and let me know if you agree and or disagree but we're in a good dilemma when it comes to some positions on the park which is which is good um, do you know what somebody should do right now somebody should like tell Div to start leaving because we're like we're nearly done we've not got a long time to go so somebody fire into that whatsapp the new night. I think somebody. my signal's quite shite in here you're not connected to the Wi-Fi. Nah, no very wifi. poor I'm very. not stealing stay, stay the Wi-Fi. <laughs> right, okay, so the first 11 to start the season, Joe Hart obviously in right. goals, and I've not even got Barkas anymore to make the joke of Barkas, shame, rest in peace. Um, back four, does it pick itself? No, it doesn't pick itself. It doesn't pick itself actually, um, because Carol Starfelt, he won't be back. You could assume he will not be back, which leaves a gaping question of who starts. Is it Welsh? Is it Jens? It will be Welsh. You think it'll be Welsh? Aye. I think it'll be Jens. I don't think so. I think just because Welsh has played like, all through the pre-season. Only, I think it's been, you know, I'm going to agree with Kieran on Welsh for one reason. Because I think it's been very telling that in some, I think in two friendlies, he's played a substantial more amount of minutes than like Vickers has. And Welsh has played like 80 minutes or something, 70, 80 minutes. And I feel like that's them saying, right, get as much time so that you're Can in you that team. Next I, I don't think you'll get the full 90. No. But mm. I think you will start, maybe play up to the 60th, 65th minute, depending on how the game's going sort of thing. But... Nah, even though I probably would like to see Jens, to be honest, but I, I do think it will be Stephen Wells, just the way pre-seasons went. The only thing I'm thinking, um, obviously Jens got quite a bit of game time on Saturday, and he was playing with Carter Vickers, so I was maybe maybe right. Andrew's wondering how those two will link up, how, how they're looking How long was so he playing with Carter Vickers for? About half an hour, was it half an hour? I didn't think Carter Vickers was... I mean, I can't really remember the subs, but I know he... Carter oh, right, he got taken off late on, didn't he? So it started as Jens and Carter Vickers, and then Carter Vickers got took off with Julian, minutes. and it was Jens and Julian for like the last sort of right. 10, 15, I think. Right, so he played so- 15, 20 minutes, 15, probably, 20 something minutes. like so that. Much I, didn't, I didn't write down the times of the subs, mm. so I'm not going to try and pretend I know I what I remember. I did my notepad now. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so so it, probably, it probably will be Welsh, but I want it to be I want it to be yeah, ends as well, yeah. I do. I mean, there is a risk attached to that because yeah. we don't know what we're getting, but you sign these players for money, you may as well fucking play them. Um, and then the fullbacks, Juranovic and who? Taylor. 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 It will be Taylor. It'll be it's Taylor's Taylor. jersey to lose at the moment. Yeah. I think it would be Taylor. I think it would be good for Taylor to have somebody there competing for the space back because I mean you've seen that so many times in the past. Babe. Even James Forrest at Celtic when Paddy Roberts came in, especially like obviously Paddy Roberts there for the six months, ran riot and then got into the Invincible season. James Forrest kicked down to a game, so I think it's healthy to have. I think it would give Taylor a kick up the arse. I think you know it's good for Taylor because of course there's always been question marks over his ability and now is the time to actually apply the pressure to him does yeah. pressure make diamonds in this situation I mean he had a pretty solid end to last season to be fair a lot of people were starting to come around to him so he needs to try and continue that because I mean I think a lot of the thing people have been saying is Greg Taylor's not somebody we can rely on in Europe he needs to go and prove that it will be a reliable option mm-hmm. yeah yeah um, I think about Burnaby he's very going- He's a very, very rough diamond. Very rough. Mm-hmm. As, as in, he's very much a work in progress. And I get, I get grilled for calling him that. Um, after the what age is he about? 20, 20, 21. 21. After the Banica Strava game. The, Massive. I, I feel like you, this isn't a dig on you by any means. But I feel like we've got to be really, really careful with how we look at Bear in the Bay and how we put pressure on him because there's a reason that he's the first South American to play for Celtic since Raphael Scheitz. Because yeah, South Americans just don't settle in that well over here. It is a big risk and it's probably going to take a while for him to adapt. I think he's arguably the first Mark Lowell signing as well. Because Mark Lowell's so? uh, area of expertise for the City Group was South America. That's probably why we're getting linked to a lot of South Americans, actually, yep. now that I think about it. I forgot about Mark Lowell being in, in, involved with the club. Yeah. So we're going for the back four of Juranovic, Carter Vickers, Welsh and Taylor. Mm-hmm. 
think it'll be alright. It's okay. Second year in a row, Welsh is starting the back four. That mm. pisses me off. Can't help it, sadly. Midfield three. I'll let you give it what you think your three will be because I think uh, mine's is O'Reilly, McGregor, and Hitati. No, be alright. Yeah. I think that's what I would play anyway. I mean, Tur- Turnbull played well at the weekend um, as well, but I don't know if you'll see him starting. I don't know if Turnbull's played his way into the team, though, with his performance in the second half, because I thought um, O'Reilly was OK at the weekend. I didn't think he was at his sparkling best, but then again, he was he was really good against Legia Walsh. I'd be sound with either of them. Well, I'd be sound with either of them. Aye, that's the thing. There's no many complaints you can have with a midfield freeze that we can play. I think... We're on the precipice of a, a, a really, really good Turnbull season again. If he can mm-hmm. stay fit the whole year. He was so unlucky in the cup final. Aye. Because the way it was going from August to December, his numbers were incredible for the team. Mm-hmm. And he was arguably one of the first names on the team sheet for Ange as well. If he can just sharpen up on a couple of things, then we'll get a, another hell of a player on our hands. And it's so good that we can swap between the two. Uh, quite seamlessly and it, it'll, it'll make us not miss Rogic as much as well which will be good yeah I mean, Rogic is a massive miss but I think it can be softened the blow can be softened with Turnbull and O'Reilly yeah um, I, I think that we're just in such a good position for the midfield and it can only get better if we do go out and sign a central defensive midfielder as well which is good um, another thing about the midfield there's only one place that's sort of for grabs just now and that's and even then a lot of people will say that's a stick on that O'Reilly gets in that team because it's McGregor, Hatati, and somebody else. Mm. I think Hatati plays every big game for us this season. If his fitness levels can mm-hmm. keep up with it, I think he will be playing. Aye, uh, that's the, the only reason I think O'Reilly will have a better season than Hatati is because I think there might be a difference in consistency and fitness between those two, and that's the only reason I think that O'Reilly will be. Big, I mean, time will tell. Be fair, because I mean, no yeah. perception of Hatati's fitness is coming off the back of a full exactly, season in Japan, exactly. so it's kind of skewed <laughs> with that. So, and then the front three, there's so many options of how what three you could line up as well. What in, this is, you know, fucking they make it hard. This used to be easy. This see, mm. back when I started YouTube, it was Sinclair, then Barely, and Forrest. You knew what you were <laughs> working. <laughs> getting um, and maybe Griffiths would get thrown in from time to time Aye. oh yeah by the way what a year not, not one mention oh, we'll have to, not one time will we have to like debate Lee Griffiths on this oh, podcast this season I'm just so happy that ship sailed <laughs> oh he went down with the ship yeah he's, Titanic he, he was on he, he, yeah yeah he went that, down. that West Ham game will live just, on did, so many is, it, is that true about the move to Hartlepool what he, he never did, turned, he up, never turned up for the medical wow I, I still find it funny that Paul Hartley manages Hartlepool. Aye, uh, Paul Hartlepool. Love uh, that. Aye, uh, brilliant. Um, right, okay, what's your front freeze? I'll let you start off this time. I think it'll be Jota and Maeda on the wings and yep. Keogh go up to that. Yep, I agree with that. But we're in a position where there's so many players that you would have mind starting. Yeah, Nabada's looked good in Sabada, James Forrest. <laughs> um, yeah. Johnson, we've not even mentioned him. Yeah, I think it will be the three that you say, but I want it to be Giacomacus. He's my, he's my, he's my, he's my, he's my guy, isn't he? He's my guy. I think I like, him to bits too. That's not yeah. my, that mad sound on TikTok, you know, he's my pal. He's my friend. <laughs> my no. good time boy. It's <laughs> <laughs> my good time my boy. sweet cheeks. <laughs> my, my, my rotten soldier. <laughs> um, that he is my guy, you know, like I just, I need him on the park. He makes it a better looking field. Wow. I, I fancy him, mate. I fancy him. Kyogo's a no, winner. I'm not. Absolutely not. But I fancy Yakimakis. He's, he's our sweet prince, Kyogo. As a, as a straight man, I fancy Yakimakis. Right. Like, you can't know. Fanta Lemon. Don't even start with that. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you're on about. Fanta <laughs> Lemon, mate. Disgusting. Um, I, I think it will be that free as well. But once again, it's such, such a good headache to have. Yeah, the fact that a bad I can feel pretty hard done by as well because what a, what a great season he had and he's probably going to be on the bench. Um, but Maeda plays Maeda yeah. plays in an Ange team even though it was outside at the weekend his goal was in a, a screamer I don't know how off the Norwich boy I don't know I thought it was outside like, in the lead up to it mm. it was a good cross uh, uh, Juranovic has been getting stuck but it was a good cross into uh, Maeda and it's a phenomenal finish one thing we never spoke about in the pre-season talk was what, the best goal of pre-season there were so many good goals but it has been a uh, Hattati one against Warsaw it's got to be that uh, Matt O'Reilly's against Spanik Ostrava that was a cracker as well that was a good goal that was a good goal and a lot of good goals in pre-season we only scored good goals now we never <laughs> stop we never stop What's that? we never stop well finally I will ask you the big question and that is your score predictions for the game on Sunday here we go again here we go again another season I know is Ryan going to hit out with us? That's what I'm saying. Here we six, go again. A 6 0 to start off the season. 4 1. 4 1, okay. No clean sheet for Celtic, but four goals. No, because I see the, how high Joe Hart's playing, and I'm like, Christian Ramirez, if he's got anything about him, just chip. Okay. 
Kieran? I was thinking 3 1. That's why I wrote down for my TSF predictions. Give us some faith in your goalie. God's sake. But he's not even our goalie anymore, is he? He's, he's like our third centre half now. True. Is that high up? But do you think he'll be the same in the campaign? Or do you think that was pre season? I think that's what he's getting uh, built up for. Uh, right. I think that's what he wants to do. He's my man, I can't believe it. I'm I think the thing that we noticed as well in pre season, there's so much more one touch football. Yeah. Some of this stuff yeah. is just brilliant. Absolutely. If we can, if we can replicate that on um, in the league at least, then we're on to something good. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'm going to go for 3 0. So Celtic, I think we'll keep a clean sheet. I do. But nice to start off the season right. with some goals and a clean sheet if we could do that. But that is it. That is the opening game of the season. And hopefully, so this this is the thing with the podcast. Like, I want to get a consistent day of doing it for the next wee while, so that we can like talk about games and stuff when they're fresh. So I don't know when the next one will be out. Maybe I don't know if we can find a way. We might do it in the Monday next week or something like that, so that we can we can. Um, or maybe the Sunday night or something, I don't know, just so that we can talk about the game so fresh. We'll think it. fuck if you can come, come around Sunday night to the <laughs> podcast. Mm. Oh, what's wrong with that? Sunday's a day of rest. I'm raging enough that the game's on the Sunday. Aye, but you're not, you're a you're about, aren't you? Sunday as well. You having a drink, aye? Well, first game Ah, well, he's, he's out uh, there. Half four. I'll date myself. Right, I'll date myself. <laughs> I'll come here and I'll sit here <laughs> myself. Video. Just <laughs> talking to the mics. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Still not moving there. I agree. Um, right, anyway, <laughs> it's time for the first quiz of the season yes I love a quiz I love a, I've missed the quiz I feel um, like I've not done the quiz in ages not, I, 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 I'm, I'm changing it up this season we're oh, going to do Twitter questions last I mean or do I, you want me to do Twitter questions okay, I don't first? care right. no I'll change it up because I mean now's the perfect time to now's the time to do it okay I'm, I'm still reeling over the fact that I didn't win the Driftwood quiz last night are we so out? I t- yeah I was on a tie break <sighs> it was only my sister and I and we get Oh, I've seen your Insta story uh, actually. 74 uh, from the two of us, which wasn't too bad. Um, I've, I've not done the drift food quiz in about four years, man. We used to get absolutely scudded every time we've done it, man. I don't like the drift food quiz because it's so easy to cheat in that. Oh, yeah, you are about the integrity. I'm, I'm all about, mate, when it comes to quizzing, you need to be an, a, a man of, of, of honesty. An integrity. Uh, of integrity. Is, it, is, this, is this a. Is this a dig at me because I looked over at the who's that tick? Because <laughs> I did, I did admit to it, and I did admit to that Portuguese player last season. Remember the oh, I was it for the TSA. I don't know if it was for TSA or. I, I, I remember you're talking about that. You're Tavares. A, you're a scumbag. Yep. You're a scumbag. Right, hurry up and get on with it. Right. Quiz. Okay. Right. So we've got set A and set B as we normally do. Courtesy of Matthew Duff. Thank you, Matthew Duff. Thank you to the contributors who send us in our quizzes. It's a new season. They'll be hopefully doing the same for us as they always do. When I said hurry up and do the quiz, I didn't mean you had to talk that fast. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah. Well, I. Um, so, hey, Ryan McGinley, because Kieran got to pick the last time on who's that tick. Do you want set A or set B? I'm gonna let the birthday boy go first. Oh, you're gonna let Kieran go first. Right. Pressure right on. Dum, 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 Question one. But you're saying I want to be Edward though. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to get to sing that with Edward well, Mashu. Just saying, hope we can my sing shoe. that. Right, Kieran, question one for you to kick us off in the quiz. How long are we in? 57 minutes? Oh my God, right. Fuck That's hell. Let's move. Do you know what? It's the opening spectacular. Div's still probably about 20 minutes away if he's even bugging left. Right, so question one for you, Kieran. Alexandro Bernabe has never been called up for the full Argentinian national team. True or false? True. It is true, yes. Five caps for the under 23s, but of course he's never played with the senior squad. Right, and question one for you. Did Jota score more goals for Benfica's first team or Valladolid? I'm going to say Valladolid. You're correct. Mm. One goal for Valladolid. No goals. Don't know. I, I remember a zero next to his name at Benfica. Right. Okay. Question two of you. Here. Mikey Johnson is rumoured to be going to Standard Liège on loan, but who is their manager? Ronnie Dyer. Correct. Zero. That's good. That's good, Kieran. Well done. That's a p- perfect score so far. Well done. Question two for you, Ke- uh, Ryan. Which is the oldest of the three former Celts? Is it Frank McAvenny? Charlie Nicholas or Mo Johnston? Boo. I think it's Mo Johnston. Frank McAvenny. Six, I, I just said Mo Johnston. 62 well. years 62. old. Is Charlie Don't Nicholas know what does say. Don't know. Like Don't know, mate. Don't know. He's only given the age of the oldest. So. Right. Even got to guess. Right, there you go. 2 1 to Kieran. Then, Kieran, you could take a 3 1 lead here. Name the last defender to score for Celtic. 
Julian. Correct. Well, Is still that goal after? Yep. Yep. Well done. Well, done. well done. Yep. Yep. That's good thinking because I thought you were going to go competitive games. Well done. I would have done that. Right, Kieran. Uh, Ryan. Sorry. Which former Celt did Moritz Jens play with at Fulham youth level? Which former Celt? Which former Celt did Moritz Jens play with? Oh my god! At Fulham youth level. Oh, I know the camp. good years. Good years because I was expecting you to jump in uh, with Matt O'Reilly there. I was like, I wasn't shouting at him. Uh, Fulham youth. Fulham youth. Oh, Paddy Roberts. Paddy Roberts, correct. Well done. Kept your selling at 3 2. Kieran, for 4 2. Celtic are due to play Aberdeen on Flag Day, but which team was the last to beat Celtic on the opening day at Celtic Park? I've seen this on Twitter. Eh? Was it not Stevie put it up or something? I don't know, mate. Oh, I was it, it, was, it, it was in the fifth. Somebody put up something about in the 50s or something. The year was 1950. Oh, you bastard. I actually look... i seen it on Twitter. I don't know. I need to just go with my random team. East Fife. Ryan, do you know? No. Greenock Morton is the answer. 4-3. I've actually seen the tweet. I know. There you I'm go. So this good. is a chance for an equaliser, Ryan. Oh. Chance for an equaliser. The revenge of last night. Wait, did you say 4-3? 4-3. But it'll be 3-3. Three, three. No. They beat them. We beat Celtic. Like, oh, right, I thought you were talking about the score between oh, us. I was like, what? No, 4-3 was the score in that game. Oh, right. This could uh, be, this, uh, this, could be this could be 3-3 three, three between mm-hmm. you. Right. Uh, Stephen Welsh has recently been linked with Toulouse, namely only two clubs in Ligue 1 that is further south than Toulouse. What? <laughs> My God. Matthew Duff is the one that said to It's easy. If you know your geography, this should no, be I easy. Don't. I failed that. Um, Joke's on you. I've been to I've been to both places. No, I just pass that. I'll, I'll, I'll never get that. I mean, one of them is Monaco. One of them is Monaco, the Principality. The other begins with an M. Marseille, Marseille, and Monaco. Never got that. Number two places. So, Kieran, you could win here. That Who is. was Jock Steen's last ever signing for Celtic? Hmm. Have you got the year? No. Have I just taken Well, he left in what, 1974? I think, think it was. It's a tough one. Do you know it? I know. I generally don't know. There's not many clues I could give you without giving you the answer. I don't even know the years, like, the players, like, back then. He would have been young at the time. That's your only clue. He's old now. <laughs> I know, of course he's old now. <laughs> I don't even know. Packy Bonner. I mean, I guess that. Got that. There you go. So, Ryan, quiz. to Black take, it, to take, it, to take it to the tie break question, like a studio, it's a scotcher in here. Mm-hmm. Celtic recently faced Legia Warsaw in a friendly, but what did their banner say years ago in response to Celtic progressing in the Champions League instead of them? What banner? Was, was they had a banner years ago after, yeah, right. after Celtic knocked them out of the uh, Champions League. Was it not like... The, was it the hashtag let football win? Or was it the fuck you UEFA win? That was none. That was none, mate. What was it then? Was it not, Which means Kieran's our winner this week, first of all. Well done, Kieran. Birthday present for you winning the quiz. I, do you know? I don't know. I'm a head at the mad man. It's like the pig in the suit. <laughs> He's holding up the new six <laughs> one. That's what I thought. <laughs> so the banner was I, don't, I can't remember the design that goes along with it but the message emblazoned across the banner was six is six is less than one because football doesn't matter money does a tough question yeah Matthew you, you had a I know. set B had a couple of honkers tonight I gave him a birthday present with the, uh, the tiebreaker would have been how many midfielders scored for Celtic during pre-season not including wingers I can't even be asked going through my head trying to calculate things well, he's actually wanted the question wrong because the answer he's given is like how many goals have were shared between the midfielders. It was seven goals. Uh, O'Reilly scored two, Hattati scored two, and Turnbull scored three. So there you go. That is your Turnbull quiz. Scored three. Yep. Wow. So there you Amazing. go. That is your that is your quiz for this week. Well that was done. a good quiz. Well done, mm-hmm. boys. It's as you mean to go. Well done, Kieran. Right to end the show. Let's rifle through some Twitter questions. It's nice to be back. If you've enjoyed your first show back, boys. 
Cooking, but cooking, I know. I think for the break, I'm going to have to stand outside for a short five or ten minutes. We'll never rise because I am melting up in here. Right, okay. Profile. Let's see. And get the sell the funders tweet up. Ryan, starting from the next show, I'll let you go back to hosting the questions. It gives oh, me a break, but I'm going to go today because I've got it up. So right. Good. So we're going to start with uh, Kieran, the, the the who's that tick master, uh, who has said many happy returns to the Holiday Man himself. That's your kid. Uh, he has he obtained the Costco cake or the Millie's birthday cookie to celebrate? Neither. No. Oh, what'd you get? Nothing. I asked not to get a cake. Why would you do that? Watching the figure mm-hmm. for Ivy Fat. Uh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I love a I love a bit of cake, man. I do. Costco cake. The sponge is better than icing. Let's see if you get a corner, but there's too uh, much icing on it. We, we spoke about this in a podcast before, and you were grilling me for picking the dinosaur or the football pitch. This speaks volumes. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> Especially when it was your 16th birthday. Fuck off. Uh, right, also, who do you see as the surprise package this season? Personally, I think Greg Taylor is going to shock a lot of people um, after being top class from Jan... Jan I was going to say Jan May, I meant Jan to May. I said Jan May. Um, <laughs> so, Jan, you to me. See, I read that and I was like, if Greg Taylor was to have a good season, it wouldn't shock me now because of last season. That's mm. the thing. Um... Surprise package. Okay. Let's get through these quick fires. Yeah, uh, surprise you. package. Uh, uh, James McCarthy. I'm just going to turn that around. Uh, <laughs> There's still people that think that. Um, Maeda, I think he's going to score a lot of goals. Right. I'm going to turn the bull. Davy. The bull. DT14. The bull. We're going to make that a thing on this podcast. Let's turn up and charge real life. <laughs> Uh, with regards to celebrations, Maeda's going to change his celebration because uh, his daughter doesn't like Anpin Man anymore. Oh, is that the reason? That's no, he does the celebrate. That's Juranovic does it with him as well. So his daughter sees the celebration. Right, right. Okay, right. Uh, Shugs Doogie, my man, he says, Do you think Goodwin will set up to grab a point or will be looking to take three? I feel like the first game of the season, he'll need to show a bit of intent, to be honest. So I think he might need to go for it. Cool. I hope he goes for it. Nice. Right, Jordan Gray, he's asked a question. He says, like my, <laughs> my only that. question is, do you have a stripper book to dance on the podcast table for Kieran? I mean, Div's coming in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the lights is where the lights dim. They go back up. Div's standing there topless on the table. Phil Monty. <laughs> 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 Still getting him like, who's damn? <laughs> <laughs> um, David Turnbull is in the replies. He said, if Celtic were allowed to set up an affiliation with any one club outside the Premiership, Championship League 1, League 2, who would you choose? I'd personally pick Albion Rovers. You talk about but putting players out in the Aye. Way. Well, basically, there we like Queen's Park, aren't we? I know. The amount we send it there. We gave a fair few. I mean, we sent it. Like, do we not get a few to Airdrie? Ah, Airdrie. Bastards, aren't I know, aye. Back in Royal last season. In yeah. Affle Abbey. Yeah, um, fuck, I don't really care. Nah. Didn't firm one. Nah, fuck the game. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck it, we'll go Queen's Park. Queen's Park. Local. I need to pick the bus for that. I mean, you should be yeah. surely you'd be picking Albion Rovers out. You're local. Um, I really <laughs> said about that, the bell. Um, <laughs> I, I'll get stuck for that too, but I want to send them at a higher level than that, to be honest. Okay. I'm going to skip through some questions. Apologies if we don't get one, but we are in a lengthy show here, so I'm just going to pick the ones that I think are like the best. So, and a lot of the questions, like there's ones like Jens or Starfelt, which I think is hard to like weigh up at the uh, moment. Bernabe, left back, a winger, once again, hard to weigh up at the moment. So there's some questions I feel like we can't quite answer yet, or we've maybe even touched on on this show already. So I'm going to skip through some of them. So if we don't, it's nothing personal if we don't ask a question. Keep coming back every weekend. You will be on the show. Elliot said, first of all, happy birthday, Mr. Old. Secondly, have you, t- uh, <coughs> you you have to have a Bilbo's party and you must invite what the fuck's a Bilbo's party? I'm asking that question. A right. Bilbo's party. Is it Bilco? I'm gonna Google Bilbo's party. Like That's like Bilbo Baggins. Bilbo's farewell party was a grand celebration held by Bilbo Baggins on his one hundred and eleventh eleventh birthday in the party field on September twenty. Yeah, I have not watched I've never mate. Have, have, have any of us no, no wow, we are we're, 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 we're in the mud. We're in the mud. Not one of us has I seen didn't it. Intend watching it, but uh, they're not on it. Wow. Um you have to <laughs> Bilbo's party, you must invite one current and one former Celtic player and one former Celtic manager. Who's going here? One current Celtic player? Yeah. James McCarthy, I need to find out if his cunt's actual funny or not. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's a few players who said he's the hands uh, 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 of the dressing room. Uh, I need to see it. Former player. Former player. Um, Arthur Boric. Oh, okay. He's, he's definitely a nutcase. Uh, so, yeah, he'd dish out the snout as well, you have saying. And then a former manager. Surely it's Lenny. Nah, he'd ruin my fucking game. <laughs> 
<laughs> You've still not forgiven Ronnie me. Tyler. <laughs> Ronnie Tyler. He'd be sound. It's a good freak here. Well done. I hope you enjoy your Bilbo's party. Thanks, Elliot. <laughs> Do they um, have to be alive, these people? No. They gotta bring back Willie Mary. <laughs> 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 Start singing Lovely me <laughs> is your is name, name. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting there What the fuck's happened here um, uh, So for me um, I was only asking Kian, But you can go Oh, no, it's fine go mate No it's my special I day but <laughs> I'd be better, better the old uh, Arthur Boris Oh no it's too former Joe Hart Better the old And Jock Steen There you go There's my three Current players uh, No I'm Lenny <laughs> Juranovic I think he's sound a former Celtic player. Say quick fire, Probably, right? Uh, Arthur Boric, um, former Celtic manager, Jock Steen. Nice, okay. Uh, firstly, happy birthday, Kieran Old says, Caden, secondly, if we go into the season without strengthening and further on the window, how confident would you be? I'd be still as confident as I am. I'm happy with the squad. Yeah. It can get better, but I'm yeah. happy with it. So, I know, I'd say the same, to be honest. I think the problem is we've done all our business so early that people expect more. I know. That, to sort of because we're not doing it. And like, I know. Yeah. Like we have done our business, guys. Come on, look. Just because just we're so not used to getting it done early. Man. This is what we're supposed to This is what good teams do. Um, do their business early. Lyle, how many goals could Jakimakis realistically score this season if he isn't unlucky with injuries? Also, happy birthday, Kieran. I think it's going to be difficult because I mean you've got two strikers if they both stay fit then it's maybe I'd love to cherry see, picking what games they play in. I'd love to see both get 15. I was thinking that exact same thing. If both could hit 15, I think that'd be very successful. But I want more. I want more! Um, But I I think that's a a nice number, to say the least. Uh, Stuart kind of follows up now. Who do you think will play the most minutes out of the forwards? I think fitness is probably a big... Kyogo. Part of it. Do you think Kyogo will play more? I I think think it's too hard to say, don't Uh, I? We'll get a gauge of it, I think, Mm -hmm. as the first few weeks go by. Um, Che, first off, happy birthday again. Um, I never got this many fucking happy birthdays when it was mine. Uh, Surprisingly surprisingly not too rough for the podcast, he says. That is a Wednesday. (laughs) Well, it is a Wednesday, to be fair, it is. I mean, it would have been a bye that is your you birthday. The Champions League games coming up, so yeah. Right. Uh, did it, secondly, does Irigucci's injury worry us? I worry any of you about the midfield depth, um, especially defensively. Not really, because I think we will get somebody else in. To be honest, I think we're going to get somebody else in, even before this happened. To be honest, but nah, I'm, I'm not overly worried. Vinny Souza was the dream, wasn't he? Yeah, Vinny Souza. Where they end up going again? Espanol. I thought it was. I was about to say Granada. The smallest team in Barcelona. Yeah, well, they'll be the biggest soon. <laughs> they actually won't if you've read into it. Uh, Barca are all right. Ah, oh, they'll say that. Hunters, they uh, said that about a certain team in Govan, and then they won the all right. So, hope there's any Rangers fans watching this point. Probably will be. <laughs> right, let's be honest. Aiden, this is we've got a first food question of the season, boys. It's good to be back. First of all, happy birthday to Kieran. For, then, right, this is a big one. Rank in order. Coca, super, and pot noodles. Coca Love that. Question. Wait, did you say Coca, Coca noodles, super noodles, and pot noodles? That order. Is that the order you'd say? No. Right. Pot, pot noodles and a fucking stinking. There's no redeeming one. The fucking rancid. I like the curry one. I love a beef and tomato one. Nah, horrible. <laughs> super super noodles. I used to like when I was a wee guy, but they're pure slimy as fuck. The Coca noodles are doable. But I'm not. I, a big I, I wouldn't touch any three of them. I'm, the controversially, I'm not a big fan of coke and noodles. I got put after them in school. Because uh, you were probably having them at eight in the morning. <laughs> no, it's not bad. I assume you used to I'd walk get... into school and people were sitting there munching cunning noodles and they've got a bottle of LS for you. I'm like, eight, no, no, no. Check the fucking nick in I'm going to walk myself in a shit here. But see, the company knows you better bring back micro noodles. They were the, the goats. Remember? Do you remember micro noodles? You just put them in the microwave? Nah, no, I never Rings a bell. No. In the middle, in the middle shop that we would we would call it the middle shop when we went in high school, they would put curry in it, so you'd get chicken, micro noodles with curry sauce, mix it all together. That it's sounds decent. Unbelievable. Me and Kieran have a favourite noodle. I don't know what the name is exactly, but they're a cracking. They, he's a foreign noodle. Oh, they're you used to be able to get playful. them in Tesco. Wait. Get them in Morrison's, but the barrel load, man. But a barrel. Man. I need to make. I've got plenty in the fucking cupboard, honestly. Oh, Brilliant. So I forgot the name of them, but they're absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Anyway, I would go personally for my free. I would go super noodles first, Did pot you know noodles that? second. I've not seen nah, that. I've seen that. Unreal. I'd go super noodle, pot noodle, coconut noodle because I'm really put off coconut noodles for school. So, right. 
That's mine. Right. Super Coca Pop. But I like Ponados. Uh, Cal is back, as always. Uh, he said, firstly, happy birthday to Kieran. And secondly, are we Champions League ready? I think you're shaking your head. Let's see. We'll never it. be Champions League ready. I know. That's let's, the problem. Is, what is the definition of Champions League ready? Let's, no getting scudded. Let's right. save it for a show closer to the time. Because it's a ma- it's, that's not a rapid fire answer. That's nah. a discussion that. We do appreciate it, Cal, obviously. We, we do appreciate it, but there will be a lot of discussion to go around it. Okay. Uh, positions we need to strengthen. We've done that. Well, Mark is in with a question. He says, Happy birthday as well. Um, thoughts on the Twitter fiasco? What one? <laughs> well, what one indeed? So I'm assuming the catfish mm. scenario. Just, I don't know. Kieran was caught out bad. Mm-hmm. Takes a lot of my DMs. No, <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Um, was some, there, was, there was some night that uh, I was laughing, just laughing on as it I all. Can you believe it? Nah, look at that. It's especially because that one that was the Tigsy account put up in the morning, like the proof and all that. That it, I know. I mean, scrolling past that. Uh, uh-huh, and then buying ten ten minutes later, she's a fucking catfish. Um, I didn't even even need for that from the show. Catfish the show. I've never, never, watched I've, we did, never watched that. Was that n- no? Did we not get me to watch an episode of that in uni? No. Or am I imagining things? Did we? Are you sure? I'm certain. I'm sure in uni we got me to watch an episode yeah. of that. Did you not watch an episode in some class in school or something? I feel like somebody mentioned that. I'm telling you, it was one of the ones we had to go and watch in our own house. I'm fucking sure of it. Well, I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, we did. I know we did. Uh, and how well do you think we did? Europe, well, Europe questions, we'll, as I say, we'll save yeah. it for a podcast course at the time. Uh, you, league table predictions, somebody's asking yours. Um, but no I'll, I'll, be on, I'll be on TSF at some point and I'll say. Aye, aye, that's fine. Plus I'll have the you know, advantage of the <laughs> season already being started. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which player impressed you the most during pre-season done that? But thank you. Thank you to everybody who has sent in questions. Player. Uh, who pay buff day, Kieran? What do you get the chip? I feel like we've done this question. Sean Lee has asked. I feel like we've done the chippy order about five times. Yeah, a million times. So she's supper. So she's supper, aye. Half pizza supper. No crunch. Sausage supper with a battered fish, two pickled onions, a battered burger, a and hot two pizza. Two <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thoughts on the new banners? Christ, didn't even talk about yeah, it. That's for, that's for Kieran. Um, I think they look smart, but obviously people are going to compare them to the old ones. I think in a few months' time, they'd just quite give a fuck, if I'm being honest. But at the time, people, as you said earlier, I mean, the modern people don't like change. So, And Adam chips in with the last question. After that saying, is paradise really paradise without a Parker's banner? No. It wasn't for that time, but it is now. I think you're too, you're too your state. You couldn't just go back to like, the Bear Stadium. Right. That's us. Well, that's us through all the questions. As I said, 16. some that we never had. Do you know what? That's actually no bad yeah, for no, a season preview show. That's actually not It's been a bad. really enjoyable one. It has been good. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. I don't know how far away we are from having Div with us in our presence but uh, I'm going to take a five minute break anyway outside because I will combust right. in here um, so that brings us to the end of our show thank you all for listening to our first show it's not technically our first show of the season we did do a couple through the summer but it's our first sort of proper one where we've had conversation and we're back which is good McGinley's back yep. which is alright um, <laughs> <Cheers, mate. laughs> uh, boys thanks for joining me Pleasure. Kieran, I'll well, see that, you in five minutes on TSF. Um, yeah, like and subscribe if you're on Spotify. Make sure you give us five stars, and we'll see you all next time.